today we're going to go over HTML tables. And before we start on HTML tables, um, we're just going to have a very brief history lesson about the proper use of HTML tables. Back in the old days, before CSS was widespread use and because CSS was just in the process of being developed and people didn't know it and browsers didn't support it and there were bugs in it and so on. But back in the old days of CSS, uh, before CSS was widespread in use, people would use tables to sort of divide their page into a grid and lay out their page that way. So if any of you did web development years ago, you may have used tables to help lay out your page the way that we use CSS to lay out our page now. So people would divide a page into sections and put uh, something in, you know, um, put maybe a logo in one cell, a banner in another cell, a navigation in another cell, and so on. Um, <clears throat> if you learn that, uh, unlearn it, all right? We're going to use tables for their proper use, uh, and that is to represent a table of data. CSS has improved so much back since then, and browser support for CSS has improved since then, and people understand CSS, so now there's no reason to do that. So if you did web development years ago, unlearn that. If you didn't do web development years ago and you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. Just don't learn it, all right? But just in case you see an old web page that has a table uh, to help make the layout of the page, you'll, you'll understand why it was done that way. What do I mean by table? I mean, by table, I mean something like an Excel worksheet. All right. Excel worksheet's an example of a table, a data table, right? Where you have rows and columns of things. So rows, columns. And for example, we're going to look at this example today, and we'll at least do part of it. But there's a table to calculate tuition that shows you your tuition here at LC. This is what I mean by a table. There's rows and columns of data. All right. So how do you know what belongs with what? Well, if you look at this, 638 or $636.88. That's the fee for an out-of-county resident for four credit hours. So the row tells you the number of credit hours, the column tells you what the residency status is. So that's really what we mean. Something like this you could easily imagine to be in an Excel spreadsheet. Credit hours. in county, out of county, out of state, and then one, two, three, four, five, all the way down. All right, it's a table. There's rows and there's columns. Now, If we were to make a, a, a web page, I'm going to actually keep this on screen so I can refer to it. If you think about how to do the HTML for this, you might think that you could do something like this. And I'll put my basic HTML page in here. <coughs> I 
I can't type today. Now, we've done enough HTML to know that the white space in our page, in our code rather, doesn't matter. So in other words, I can't do something like this. I can't say credit hours in county. Out of county out of state and then one credit hour is one thirty four oh four in state. 159.22, or in county, out of county, and then out of state, 310.79. You know what, for each, for each row after this, I'm just going to put X's. You'll get the idea. All right. That'll make it easy. What if we were to view this page? What's it going to look like? I painstakingly made it look like a table in my code by tabbing things out and lining up the columns. But when I view this web page in a browser, what's it going to look like? It's just going to be a single yeah. line, right? Because remember, the browser ignores the extra white space and just considers it to be one space. So if I went and saved this, and viewed it in a browser, As predicted, it's just one line. Okay? So, how do we fix that? Well, we fix that with the table tags. Alright? There, are, there aren't a lot of tags that you need to make a table. Alright? For most basic tables, you can get by with four tags. <coughs> and then there's a couple extra tags that you can add on that kind of make it nicer, or if you have special conditions or whatever. And then uh, there's of course CSS that you can apply to it to get it the way the look to get it to, to look the way that you want to. So let's look at the basic tags associated with the table. The first tag is, as you might guess, the table tag. It goes around the whole table. So we have our start table tag, then we have our end table tag. Each table consists of a series of rows. So we have a TR tag for a row. And in our case, we want our first row to have these four headings in it. Now, each row consists of a set of cells. We can think of a cell as being like one of these things in Excel, a cell. So the TR tag does a row. The table tag does the whole thing. The TR tag does a row. 
And then we have a tag for each of the cells in our table. Now, there's two different kinds of cells that we can have in our table, a TH and a TD. The TH represents a table header or table heading. All right. Um, the TD represents table data. Uh, probably pretty obvious that these cells in the first row are table headings. Table headings is where it's not actual data, but it's just a description of what the data is. So in this case, TH TH, TH, TH indicates that we have headings for that row. All right. Our second row will also be a TR because it's a table row. And then we have TDs, because this is table data. It's, it's actual data in the table. It's not just a description like the first column or the first row was. table rows in and I'll just use an X for the data just so I don't have to type and I'm going to put a bunch of these rows in all right that's two I think our table goes up to 22 uh, credit hours. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. So we'll pretend those show the right numbers. Now when we look at this, everything's going to be aligning in neat columns. Remember, each TR is its own row in the table. Each row consists of a series of either THs or TDs. THs represent table header. TDs represent table data. We're going to look at this and make some observations about this. What constitutes a column? Well, the position of the TDs. So in other words, all of the first TDs are going to line up into a column. All of the second TDs are going to line up to a column. All of the third TDs are going to line up to a column, and so on. So let's save that and refresh. And here's our table. All right. Not bad. All right. So again, all of the TDs that were the first TD in the TR constitute the first column. And so on down the line. Now, you'll notice something about the default appearance of this. All right. Uh, how big did it make the table? Well, let, 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 let's, let's, let's back up. How big did it make each column? How big did it make each column? The size of the column header. The size of the column header, that's absolutely correct in this case. Uh, actually,
actually, though, it makes it the size of the biggest thing in that column. So in our case, the column header is the biggest thing in the column. But if we had a column that had something really big in it, if we had a TD cell that had something really big in it, <coughs> it would use that to determine the, the width of the column. All right? So it makes it as wide as the biggest thing in that column. So how wide does it make it? Well, it makes it figures out the width of each column, and the width of the table is simply the width of the four columns added together, in this case. How tall does it make it? Well, it makes it as tall as it needs to be. So the browser sort of automatically sizes this the way that it should be, the way, the way that it will fit. It doesn't do any sort of formatting other than that. It makes it as big as it needs it to be. All right? That's the default behavior of a table within a browser. Remember, the way something's going to look depends on two things. It depends on the default behavior of the browser for those tags and any CSS that we apply to those tags. Now, notice something else. Um, the THs are bold, whereas the TDs are not bold. That's, again, default behavior. Does that mean it has to be that way? Absolutely not. We might not want the TDHs to be bold, in which case we can use CSS to change that. The other thing that's kind of hard to tell at this point, maybe if I go in and I'll put back that wide column for a second, but the THs are centered over the column. So in this case, when I made that really wide TD, that becomes the width of the column. And the header for that column, the TH for that column, gets centered over the, width, the total width of the column. It's not obvious, but these are doing that too. But since they are the total width of the column, they're centered, but it doesn't look like they're centered. They're centered, but they take up the whole width of the column, so it's not clear that they are centered. But they are. So if we make those columns wider, we'll be able to tell that. All right. Most of, you can do most of what you want to do with a table using just these four tags. TDs, THs, TRs, and table tag. Um, there are other things that you can do with attributes and, and other things, but most basic tables you can, you can uh, accomplish with just these things. All right? In fact, from a couple of perspectives, including an accessibility perspective, it's actually good to keep your table simple. Because you can do some crazy things with tables. You can merge columns together, just kind of like you can do with Excel. And those sometimes have problems from an accessibility perspective. I'm going to look for one more tag, and I never remember this one. So I'm going to Google it. It's either caption or legend. Legend, I think you're looking for, Mike. Actually, I'm looking for caption. You can put a caption on a table. So, I can put a caption on this table <coughs> that says LCCC tuition chart. If you have a caption, it should appear right after the table tag. And it appears over the top like that. <coughs> now, the nice thing about a caption is the caption is, is embedded right within the table tag. 
And that helps with assistive technology, and that helps if you keep it together. So I could simply put some text above the table, but by putting the caption tag, that ties the caption directly with the table itself. Now this is pretty plain. We, we definitely might want to improve the stylings of it, so we'll look at improving the stylings of it in a minute. Again, keep in mind that just these tags are enough for most sort of tables that you <coughs> might ever have. All right. Now we're going to uh, now we're going to uh, play with the the styling of it to make it look uh, better. All right. Now one thing that you might notice is that actually creating all those table rows in this case was very repetitious. All right. And in fact. If they were to change the tuition rates, you'd have to go back and re-enter all those numbers. Keep in mind that in a, in a, in a natural website, there, there might be a server-side script that creates this table, which would get rid of all the rep repetition. So you would have, almost like you have formulas in Excel to do the calculation of tuition. You might have equations, uh, statements in your server-side code that does the calculations and automatically creates the table for you. I hesitate to say automatically, but based on what you've coded would create all the rows of the table uh, for you. All right, so let's play around with this. Now, keep in mind that you should make tags. Tags ought to be, you ought to tag things with the proper tag regardless of how it looks because you can always change how it looks. What I mean by that is, let's say I don't want these to be bold. That doesn't mean that I would make them TDs. All right? Don't lie to the browser. These really are table headings. All right? So therefore, I am going to uh, leave them as table headings. If I don't want them to be bold, I will change the CSS so that they're not bold. If I don't want them to be centered, I will change the CSS to make them not centered. All right. <coughs> I'm going to put in a style tag in here. And again, keep in mind that um, it's still better to use an external CSS file. I'm just doing this just to keep things simple so that we have everything in front of us in the one file. But I'm going to go and I'm going to, let, let's work on centering the table. All right, so I'm going to put in my style rule, and I'm going to say table. How would I set that table on the page? So I don't remember how you center things on the page. Text align center, would it be? Text align center, maybe, uh, might work. Right. There's another way that we can do it, yes. Uh, you do the margin left and right bottom. Yeah, you do the margin left and right of bottom. All right, so I can say margin... And maybe I'm going to say 10 pixels auto. Remember, this goes around clockwise. So 10 pixels for the top. The, the right margin will be auto. 10 pixels for the bottom. The left margin will be auto. I then... <laughs> Now, that's not going to do me any good because it's still going to be 100%, so it's not going to really, uh, well, no, I take that back. This will do me some good. So let's go and let's put that in. All right. And view the page. And there we go. It's centered. All right. We can set the width. All right. We can set the width of the entire page if we want. I'm sorry, the entire table if we want. So I can say width. Seventy percent. All right. And 
made the width to be 70%. Now, it's not obvious from this if we had data, uh, if we had data that was much different lengths from page to page to page, it would be much more obvious. But notice it didn't make the columns equal width. It sort of made the column sizes in proportion to what the sizes were originally, if that makes sense. So out of county is sort of the widest column. Why? Because out of county was the widest header. All right? So it gets to be slightly wider than the other, other ones are. All right? Now, I can change that if I want. Let's say I want them all to be equal. I can say TH with. 25%. That'll force them, no matter what the natural inclination of the browser is, that will force these to be the same width. So if I go and refresh that, notice how they adjusted just a little bit. All right. Now, this is a little hard to read because of how wide the columns are and the fact that the headers are centered and the TDs are not centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center the TDs. How would I center the TDs? That's where we'd use the text alignment because we're centering within, we're centering text within a container. The margin is sort of used when we want to center a block of something. The text line is when we want to center actually the text. So I can say TD text align center. All right, that makes it much more readable. All right. Now, we can play with the, ca the caption. So I can say table caption. And I can say text align left if I want to. Font size 1.5M. That makes it one and a half the normal size. And maybe I can even give a background color of blue and a font color of yellow. Keep in mind that when I do these examples, I don't intend them to be perfect. I'm just sort of illustrating how to do certain things. So, now we have that going on. Uh, I'm mentioning this because, again, I'm not going to do this for every, every tag or set of tags that we go over. But remember, like anything that you've learned how to do in CSS, you can probably do in any place, right? So making a making a background color, uh, you know, making something have a different background color. Yeah, you can, you could, uh, you could do that. Putting a background image on the table. Yeah, we could do that. All right, um, and so on. So anything that we learn how to do via CSS. Um, it applies whether we're talking about forms, tables, any of those things. So I won't go over an example of every single thing, but I will go over a few examples of this. Now, one thing that can be effective is to put like a border on the table. All right. So. Border. One. Let's make it two. 
two pixels, blue, solid. It has a border around it. Now, one thing that happens, especially when you have a table that is wide and has a lot of columns in it, is your eyes tend to drift up or down a little bit when you go across. So if I was looking at this column and I was reading across the numbers, it's possible that my eyes could drift, drift down a row or up a row. So one of the things that we could do for that would be to put a border between these things. All right? How could I use the border tag to put a line underneath, or I'm sorry, the border attribute to put a line underneath each row? Well, what would my selector be? TD. TD could work. I'm going to use TR, though. I think either of them would work. All right. So I'm going to say TR, because that's under every row. I could say border, 1px, solid, blue. And I'm going to get this. Absolutely nothing. Do you have to switch the blue and solid? Because you have you have blue no. solid for okay. No, that doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Pardon me? Like, what would happen if you use the TH or whatever? Yeah, well let's let's try that. May maybe I was wrong. T D, T D. Let's try that. Alright, there we go. Alright. So, notice what it did. It put a border around all four of the sides. The top, the bottom, the right, and the left. So if I want the border only on the bottom, I have to change that to border dash bottom. To get to your question, it's a good question. Why doesn't the order matter? The order doesn't matter because CSS and the browser is smart. All right? In other words, Look at the statement where it says two pixel blue and solid. Mm -hmm. Blue has to be what? Blue can't be the width. Yeah, it has to be a color. Yeah, it, it's, yeah it's the color. And the browser is smart enough to know that. Okay. That if you give it a color, it doesn't really matter what order it's in. It's like blue, oh, that must be the color. Likewise, two pixels. Well, two pixels isn't, isn't a color. Two pixels isn't a style. Therefore, two pixels must be the width. So it's kind of cool how that works, that it's smart enough that it really doesn't matter. Notice also that with this, this shortcut property of border, the alternative way of doing it would be, say, border-width, two pixels, border-color, border-style, I think, or border-type, one of the two. But I usually just use the shorthand border and then put the three attributes there. Likewise, I can say border dash bottom and only get the border on the bottom. Now, if you look real close here, there's a tiny little gap <coughs> there. tell you why that is, but it is. The idea is that each cell, there's a little bit of space between each cell. All right? And we can get rid of that by saying border dash collapse collapse. Remember, I didn't make this up. I'm just telling you how it is.
So if you do that, then it smushes everything together. So now your eye has that line to sort of guide it and make sure it doesn't drift up a little bit or down a little bit. Now, there's something really cool in, there's something even better than this in CSS3. So I'm actually going to get rid of this now that I showed you how to do it. And you can specify a different color for even and odd rows of the table. By the way, they used only three, you might be a little puzzled, they used only three digits. If all the digits are the same, you can say all three of them, or you can say all six of them. Or you can say only three of them or six of them. So CCC is the same as CC, CC, CC. All right? It's just a shortcut. Programmers love to, like, just cut, like, keys that they don't have to press, right? Like, typing those extra Cs would really make the difference, uh, you know, in getting a project done in time or something, you know. But programmers love those little shortcuts. Um, I think if you want to use them, great. I, I sometimes think that they can cause more confusion than anything else, and so doing it the slightly longer way, if it makes it more obvious, that might be better in the long term, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so now, when we have this, notice what we get. We have, instead of a border, we have um, alternating rows having a different color, and that makes it real easy to make sure that we keep things aligned. All right. This is sort of a throwback to the old green par bar paper that you had uh, with computer printouts. I don't know if you, any of you remember, like, the old school computer printouts. There'd be, uh, there'd be white paper, but there were alternating lines of like a faint green. Or sometimes there were other colors too, but a lot of times they were green for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, that would help you on a long report that was just packed full of numbers just to keep your eye aligned so that you could make sure that you stayed on the same row and your eye didn't drift up or down a little bit. Accessibility with tables. No, we'll save that for a second. All right. Um, what if we want to style something differently on this table? For example, if you remember on the LC tuition chart, thirteen through eighteen you get charged the same tuition rate. All right? It might be a good way for us to indicate that in CSS, that 13 through 18, you get charged the same tuition rate. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm going to put a class on these. And I'm going to say discount, because these are the discount rates. So there's 13, 14, 15, 16... 17, 18. And then I can supply a style rule for that. Because it's a class, I do dot discount, and I can do background
I know, it's going to be ugly. Interesting. It only did it for this. This is a case of my two style rules getting in the way. But I think I can remedy that. By putting in a second style rule that says Okay, for the alternating ones. Alright. <coughs> so now we can highlight the portion of the page that we want to uh, highlight because these are the discounted rates. Wouldn't you want to make it like a darker yellow instead of a... Yeah. Uh, in other words, to, to keep the alternating yeah, scheme. Keep the yeah, the alternating. Yeah, thing yeah. Thing. That, excellent point. So... Uh, what is yellow? What is the hex code for yellow? Does anyone know off the top of their head? This one is one that's counterintuitive. You get yellow by mixing a lot of red and green. So it's actually pound sign FF, FF, zero, zero. So I'm going to put the hex code in, and it should be the exact same shade of yellow. And it is. So how do we make that a darker shade of yellow? Do, yeah. Pardon me? Well, we're at FF. That's as much as we can possibly go. So what we got to do, remember, these are like light lamps. Light lamps, like, like lamps. All right, shooting colored light. If they're already turned up all the way, that gives us a very bright yellow. So if we want to make it a little bit darker, we have to dial both of them back. And if we want to keep it like yellow, yellow, we will dial them both back the same amount. Like the last the zero, zero, DD or something like it, that. Well, or AA. Interesting. Let, let's play with this because this is really interesting. If we were to do this, if we were to do this, let's say CC, all right, we're adding more blue light to it, all right? So we're adding more light to it. So it's going to make it a brighter color, but it's going to be less distinctly yellow because we've thrown some blue into the mix. So this will be sort of a pale yellow instead of the vivid yellow. But it'll still be a bright color. Believe it or not, that's yellow. It's just so pale that it looks like um, it looks like white. Let's 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 not quite go as high for this. So let's go seven seven. Alright. That one is it's hard to tell the difference. Let's go somewhere in between. Nine nine. Alright. I think you can see that that is a paler yellow. If I want it to be darker, what I would do is I would get rid of the blue altogether again and make these lower numbers. So maybe these are AA, AA. So we've, we've turned off the blue, so we're still in pure yellow here. We're not in sort of a pale, you know. You could think of putting the, the, the blue in as sort of like a, a yellowish tinted white because we have a sum of each of them, but... The, there's more red and green, so the tint is yellow. If we lower these down, we're turning the lamps down, and this will be a darker yellow. Yeah. Kind of the expensive French mustard shade of yellow. All right? And here's the really good thing about this. It's like if you didn't understand a word that I said about that, just use a color chart and look it up. Right, you know, uh, and just find a color that that goes and, and matches it, and does what you want it to do. So that's sort of the good news as far as this goes.
That's about it for tables. We have a couple more things, a couple loose ends that we'll talk about next time. Probably take just 10 minutes of class, maybe, uh, to do that. And then we'll get on to JavaScript. All right. Um, I will go and get, um, get my files. Um, I, I will go unlock the lab, then I'll come back, uh, get my files.